Now, we got news just uh, not so long ago in the early hours of today that the federal government has increased the tariff rates of 225 naira per kilowatt, uh, kilowatt per unit applicable to people within Ban A. That's the customers in Ban A. Ban A customers are those that are serviced, according to the details, 10 to 20 hours a day or par. This new rate takes effect from today and is three times more than the exist existing rate for customers' identification. The Commission has mandated the discos to put a name on the feeders. Discos have been mandated to set up rapid response team in locations where those feeders affected by the rate review are located. This will help in the performance monitoring. So that's the conversation we'll have today. Now, as a matter of fact, the truth is that when I saw this particular report, I had to check uh, my prepaid and be sure of what category. So if you're like me and a lot of Nigerians who are not sure what this means and who it affects, uh, you don't know whether you're in band A, band B, and all of the bands that are described uh, by the regulators. So that's why we have the expert to talk to us. We're being joined in the program from Abuja Studios by the Commissioner and Vice Chairman of the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, Dr. Ms. Liu Oseni. Dr. Oseni, thank you so much for coming on the program. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Dr. Seni, the place and the best place, in my view, to start from are basic explainers for the benefit of everyone. And we know that uh, there are service-based tariffs, which is seen as a scheme, classifying different people into different bands. So maybe let's begin by explaining what these bands are, because they say this particular increment affects only band A. So before we get to this band A, let's know which category we all belong to, and then we cannot talk about the band A and build it from there. Okay, uh, good evening everyone, uh, my fellow Nigerians. Nigerians. Um, the service-based tariff uh, was introduced in 2020, in September 2020 precisely, and the idea behind the service-based tariff was to ensure that people that enjoyed better hours of, uh, more hours of supply, that is, that have uh, a better quality of supply, pay higher tariff than those customers that enjoy less hour, uh, hours of supply. Um, basically, we have five tariff bands. We have uh, the lowest band, which is classified as band E, that is four hours of supply and below. We have uh, the band D, which is eight hours and below. We have uh, band C, which is 12 hours of supply and below. We have band B, which is 16 hours and below. And we have, uh, sorry, then we have band A, which is, sorry, I missed the top. Band A is 20 hours and above, 16, uh, six, uh, band B, 16 hours and above. Then we have uh, band C, which is 12 hours up to like, a minimum of 12 hours. So we have band D, which is a minimum of eight hours, and we have band E, which is a minimum of four hours. The whole idea is to ensure that the distribution companies improve in the delivery of service to customers, and at the same time to ensure that customers that enjoy better hours of supply uh, pay more for electricity. If you are band A having a minimum of 20 hours, you pay higher tariff compared to band B having a minimum hours of supply of 16 hours, then band C having a minimum hours of supply of 12 hours, then band D having a minimum hours of 8 hours. So that is the idea behind uh, that classification. We know which band we belong to because uh, a lot of people are wondering um, if it's by hours, some have not had lights for weeks. Are we in ban no alphabets? Or just, so how do people, how can people know? Because we're going to get back to this issue of ban A increment and why it was increased. But we need to get this basic housekeeping. If somebody picks up their prepaid or prospect meter and looks at, how do you know which band it belongs to without necessarily looking at the number of hours? Because if we want to depend on the number of hours, we may be confused given the abysmal level of uh, power supply we have. Okay, um, for the prepaid metered customers, you, when you vent and you look at your receipt, 
you will see that the discos have been mandated to indicate the uh, class band. If you are in band A, you will see that A is clearly written on the uh, fender receipt. Then if you are an unmetered customer, that is, you are getting bills every month, or probably you are a postpaid metered customer, you will also realize that in your bill, these codes have been mandated to put the uh, class band in there, indicating the class uh, band you are in. Um, but with respect to the review of tariff today, I think I need to emphasize that the approval granted to the distribution licenses by the commission is only applicable to band A customers. And I think I also need to provide an explanation because uh, when we started the service-based tariff and up until uh, last month, if you check the orders released by the commission, uh, the, discos, the total number of feeders that the discos have as band A feeders is over 1,000. Of course, there are 3,067 feeders in total, and uh, over 1,000 of them, about 1,100 were categorized as band A. But in the process leading to this approval, we uh, forced the disco to reduce the number of bands based on the uh, number of feeders in band A based on the empirical evidence. Uh, first and foremost, when they proposed, they proposed 874 feeders as in moving from that 1,100 they initially had. Then, upon the review by the commission, by looking at empirical data of how many feeders actually got the number of hours that can be classified or recognized as band A, which is minimum of 20 hours, we reduced the number of feeders down to 481. So out of 1, 000, uh, 3,000 feeders, and uh, initial 1,100 feeders, only 481 feeders will be affected by this uh, rate review. And the customers constitute just about 15% of the total customer population. I think I can stop here. Okay, 15% is uh, in clear numbers. Is how many? How many hundred or hundreds of thousands or millions? What, what's 15% what, by the statistic? So, Okay, currently we have over 12 million customers in Nessie, and 15% uh, of that is, uh, I think, uh, if it is 10%, for instance, that is 1.2 million, so plus 600, so that's above, about 1.2 million. Slightly below so Roughly 2 million. 2 million customers will be affected out of 12 million uh, total customers we have in Nessie. We understand that this increment is by is four times or so, even if it's for... Some people say it's big man, big trouble, uh, as it is. Uh, but what informed the increment? Okay. Uh, first and foremost, the uh, Act, if you look at the section 116, uh, subsection 2A of the Electricity Act, it mandates the Commission to ensure that the licenses operating efficiently are allowed to have to recover sufficient revenue for the capital invested and for the operational costs, as well as having a return on the investment they have made. And in, the, in that case, it means that the owners of, is on the commission to ensure that the, opera, uh, the operators actually hand sufficient revenue that we incentivize further investment in NESI in order to ensure that uh, improvement in service delivery occurs. So what informed the decision actually, apart from the provision of the Act, is in the sense that if you look at December 2023, there was an in improvement in the quality of service down to uh, January, but from January up to date, there was a dip in generation availability. What caused that was because, uh, because of lack of review of a tariff, uh, the discos cannot be mandated to pay for what they have not been allowed to charge. And in that case, the payment to generation companies has significantly dipped. 
which affects their ability to put, uh, to make sure, to maintain their machine and also to pay for gas. And if they are not able to pay for gas, definitely there won't be, because gas is one of the two significant raw materials for the generation of electricity in Nigeria. As of today, we have about 20 to 25 percent of energy mix in Nigeria coming from hydro. Then we have about 75 percent coming from uh, gas. And if the generation companies are not able to pay for gas, definitely they won't be able to generate, not minding the fact that they also need money to maintain their machines. So we are at the point where it's clearly that if nothing is done to ensure that tariff is reviewed so that the market can be relatively liquid, we are at the point of having further significant right. deterioration in the quality right. of supply in the country. All right, Dr. Um, apart from that, uh, I think it's important to also emphasize the fact that up until today, the tariffs payable by all customers are actually based on the uh, tariff determined as of December 2022. And as of then, the tariff was also not reflective of the cost because there was still some subsidy element in there. All right, all right, doc, but when doc, you not look at the macroeconomics from 2022 up to date, I think you will say that the unification of exchange rates has actually impacted the uh, cost of gas. And uh, all right, also Sandy, if, I, if I may media, box in. A few days ago. OK. okay. If I may box in, uh, uh, just so that we're running out of time, so I can get as much questions from Nigerians to you as possible. I don't think Nigerians have a problem paying for their bills. For what you're saying for Bane now, my calculations is my math is right. If somebody, uh, permit me to use the word, recharges for 25,000, you're getting barely slightly over 100 units uh, in, into your prepared and all of that. So you have talked about uh, cost reflective, that they are not getting the money that they expended in terms of the investment they need to recoup and all of that. But we're all in the same market where uh, subsidy has been removed. All of this uh, brutal economic policy by the federal government, which is seen as necessary but painful, has been affecting everyone. Is this the right time to be thinking of increasing tariff? That's on one hand, given the fact that we can't even see power in the first place. Last year, the grid collapsed 13 times. This year, it has recorded two. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I think there is a need for us to look at, you mentioned the Great Collapse last year, but it's important to also understand some of the factors that contributed to Great Collapse, uh, which was experienced last year, as well as the recent one. One of the key factors that had been identified as responsible for Great Collapse in recent times has to do with uh, one decrease in gas supply because of non-payment. And of course, also we have some issues around the maintenance of the generation, uh, uh, around the plant, generating plants. So if you combine the two together, you will realize that revenue or liquidity plays a significant role in ensuring that we have improvement in the quality of supply. And you also mentioned that people are not getting the service. And I think I just explained to you that when we started all assets, let's say two days ago, the number of feeders classified at band A feeders were around 1,100. As we speak, based on the order approved by the commission, only 481 met the list. The reason is that the commission has evaluated the service delivery and is confident that based on the existing infrastructure, without having to make additional investments, this group can deliver a uh, conveniently minimum of 20 hours to these uh, customers on these 481 feeders. And uh, a lot of uh, what was it called? monitoring and evaluation processes have, have also been put in place to ensure that the, uh, the discos actually deliver and there is a strong enforcement um, mechanism that has been put in place in the event of service failure. So um, 
And uh, when you said economic, uh, uh, looking at the economic situation, uh, is this the right time? But one thing you need to realize is that when people don't have service, they use alternative uh, supply. For instance, people getting, uh, are supposedly uh, getting 20 hours of supply. We have to use alternative source of uh, supply for just a maximum of four hours. People getting supply for less, we use the alternative source of supply for more hours. So we need to now realize that if you, are a DC, if you have a DC generator today and you have to turn it on, buy a liter of DC for around 1,600, you can only have a maximum of three kilowatt hour per liter of DC. So if you do the mathematics, already you have about 500, 550 naira per kilowatt hour. And it doesn't end there. You've not had the, the amortized uh, cost of the generator, that is the amortization of the initial capital outlay. Then right. you've not also had the, the cost of maintenance. Right, so I think Sony. it would be better for customers that are going to be affected by this increase to get higher quality of supply and don't have to spend more on generator. Right, Online, when they get like 10 hours of supply, a 16 error, by the time you now look at the cost of the generating, uh, self generation is much higher. The same thing if you are a, uh, uh, what's it called, a petrol field uh, no, if I'm a a generator owner. Yep. If okay. I'm a button, uh, so that I can, as I said, to get more questions out there. So with the uh, band A customers who are supposed to get power for minimum of 20 hours a day, is this like a precursor for every other category of people? Like you're using band A to test what the market looks like and the response, and then eventually, are we going to see increment in band B, C, D, E uh, in the next few days or in the next few months? What should Nigerians be expecting? Okay, uh, thank you so much. If uh, you have time to look at the order we just released, uh, there is a provision in the order that has mandated the schools to ensure that other customers that won't be getting 20 hours of supply are continuously migrated to higher band. And that is based on another order of the commission also, which we call the uh, order on performance of the distribution companies. So in that order, there are clearly targets. So one of the targets that is already been put there is migration of customers to a higher band, which will be a target, a KPI for the management of the distribution companies. And they have been told that now, previously, we operated the Reform Act, which had little enforcement provision. Because in the previous act, we only could uh, enforce up to a maximum of 10,000 naira per day for an offense contravening the license, terms and condition of the license and a maximum of just 10,000 for an offense uh, for the contravention of the regulation of the commission. But in the new Electricity Act, there is a provision including uh, complete uh, intervention in a disco that is not performing uh, as expected. So the CEOs of the distribution company have been uh, told that this is the time for them to either sit up or you get out. If you can't withstand the heat, you leave the kitchen. And uh, the well, commission that, is committed to doing that. Well, there are lots of questions Nigerians, Nigerians will want to ask, uh, Nick, and everyone involved, including the discos. But the luxury of time is what we do not have, but we must thank you. But the most important thing that Nigerians, in our view, have uh, to say to everyone who provides electricity, get it fixed. Let the grid stop collapsing. If you provide power for Nigerians, I think Nigerians are resilient and hardworking enough uh, to pay their bills, and everybody can comfortably migrate as much as they want. But when they don't see power and you expect them to pay, no matter the justification you provide, it's quite difficult to convince people. So there has to be loads of communication, which is why we brought you to uh, bring this uh, explainer to the people. We must thank you, Dr. Ms. Liu Oseni, Commissioner Vice Chairman, Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission. Thank you for coming on the program. Yeah, thank you so much for having me.